Okay, so this is the lesson that I was going to do today on the 17th of March, 2020. Okay, and it's partial differentiation. I will upload the blank notes as well as these handwritten notes and this recording as soon as I can. Just get my nice pen up. Okay, so <coughs> today I was going to do partial differentiation. And this is definition of partial differentiation. Okay, so what we're going to do, consider a function f, x, y of two variables. The two variables are x and y. And keep x fixed at some value x naught. So x is a set number or value. Then f of x naught y is reduced to a single function of a single variable y. Okay, so we're going to consider... y fixed sorry x fixed and it's just y that varies okay um then we can work out the derivative now you don't need to remember this next bit um but i'll go for it anyway just for once from first principles we have the limit as it's the limit as delta y tends to naught so it's f of x y but we're, we're varying the y so y becomes plus delta y minus f of x naught y over delta y. So this is the change in y over the change in y. <laughs> okay. So what we can get is we can have, so we, we've got yeah, so we've, we've just done df dx here. So this is the change in y for a little bit of y. And then df dx is the change in x for a little bit of x there. So we use the curly d notation. So I'm up to here, look. The curly d notation is used instead of the standard for partial derivatives. Okay, but hopefully this will become a little bit clearer with the example. So what we have... We've got a function, x and y here, f of x, y is x over x plus y. We need to calculate df dx and df dy. Okay, so when we do df dx, what we've got there is we treat uh, y as a constant. And then this one here, we treat x as a constant. Okay, so we're differentiating with respect to x here, so the y is a constant, and then with respect to y, and x is a constant. Okay, so if we've got f of xy is x over x plus y, and um, what we've got here, so if we want df dx, so we've got f of xy equals x over x plus y, so df d x that should be a curly d i've already broken my own rules it's important to put these curly d's in this is going to be so if we're going to treat y as a constant this is x over x plus a constant so it's a quotient rule okay so it's uh, the quotient rule if we've got if we've got um, f is u over v, f dashed, v du minus u dv over v squared. Okay, so u is x, u dashed is 1, v is x plus y, v dashed is 1. Because the we're differentiating with respect to x. We just put just emphasize that du dx is one, dv dx is also one. So df dx is v du minus u dv all divided by v squared. Oops, and v squared 
x plus y squared. Okay, so that there is there. So that, that bit there has come from the quotient rule. So this is that x, because that's x times 1 minus this x times 1. They're going to cancel. So we end up with y times 1 on the top and x plus y squared on the bottom. Okay, so there, that's the quotient rule, the differentiation. Okay, so the rules of differentiation, etc. still work. Um, just treat the variable that we're not interested in as a constant. So df dy now, x over x plus y. So now we've got y equals x over x plus y. Now, we're, now the next one, we're doing df dy. So that means the x is a constant for this one. Okay. Um, so again, we can say u is x, v, x plus y, du, dy, that's actually not, okay, because x is a constant when we're differentiating with respect to y. And this one, du, dv, dy, is actually 1, because the x is a constant and y differentiates to 1. So y dashed, oh, dy, df, dy, so it's v, which is x plus y, du, which is naught, minus u, dv, all over v squared, x plus y squared. So this is going to be minus x over x plus y squared, which is what we've got there. So again, this is the quotient rule. Okay. Right, next one, example 48. Find partial df dy and partial df dx for f of xy, x cubed plus y squared plus 2x plus y minus 7. Okay, so we've got the answer there, but I'll explain. I'll do them again by this side with explanations. So df by dy. So the, here we treat the x as a constant. So reading along here, that's a constant, that's a constant, and that's already a constant. Okay, so it's naught plus 2y plus naught, plus one, plus naught. So it's two y plus one. And then partial df dx. So now the y's are a constant. Okay, so that one's a constant, that's a constant, and that's a constant. So it's three um, x squared plus naught, plus two, plus naught, plus naught. 3x squared plus 2. Okay. And that's what we've got there. So we've got those two answers. This one. Um, just take some money. Okay. So next one, find df dy and df dx for f of xy equals x cubed y squared minus xy cubed plus 2. So partially differentiating with respect to y, the x's are a constant. So that's a constant, that's a constant, and that's a constant. Okay, so df dy, x cubed is a constant. And y squared differentiates to 2y. The next one, x is a constant, and y cubed differentiates to 3y squared. And the last one is 0. So this is 2x cubed, just tidy up now. 2x cubed y minus 3xy squared. And then the next one, partial.
partial df dx. So with this one, we treat y as a constant. So that's the constant, that's a constant, and that's also a constant. So this first one, y squared, we differentiate the x this time, 3x squared. This is y cubed, we differentiate the x to 1, and the 2 is 0. This is 3x squared, y squared, minus y cubed. Okay, so hopefully you're okay with those. So these are answers. But they match these answers here, so there's no type. There. That's an answer. Which much is that answer there? Right, next section. The chain rule for different for functions of two variables. So consider the function f of x y is x squared plus y squared to the power of a half. Okay, so this is a function, the square root of a function of x and y. So you've got to square the x, square the y. Add them together and raise to the power of half. Okay. Um, let's go straight to the. If we're going to differentiate with respect to x, you can read all that later. If we differentiate with respect to x, so that means the y is a constant. Do this here. Um, f of x y, x squared plus y squared to the half. Df dx. So outside the bracket is a half x squared plus y squared to the minus a half. And the inside of the bracket differentiated with respect to x is 2x. And the y is a constant, so that's just going to be plus zero, because, which we didn't really need to write, but I have done now. Now that half will cancel without 2, so this is going to be x, x squared plus y squared to the minus a half. Okay, so there's the answer there. And it matches there, look. Because all they've done is they've put the x to the, the, the minus a half power. They put it in the denominator and taken away the minus sign. So the next one, df dy. Ah, well there's a symmetry with this one. You can see I don't really need to write this out because it's still going to be a half x squared plus y squared to the minus a half. Then it's going to be multiplied by 2y, and then the half's going to cancel with the 2, so we're going to end up with y over x squared plus y squared to the half. Then that's not always symmetry, but in that particular example there is. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, consider f of x, y is x, example number there now, x, y minus y squared, where x is t squared and y is t cubed. So df, dx. Now this is, um, you, you, you won't really need this, but let me just, uh, I'll talk about it anyway, you don't need it for the exam, you might need it in the future. So df, dx is y, because if we differentiate with respect to x, the y is a constant there, so that's just going to be that constant, because that differentiates to 1, and that's a constant, so that differentiates to 0. And then df dy, so that's going to be x for that one, because this is, that's the constant times y, and it differentiates to just the constant, which is x. And if you differentiate y squared, it's 2y. Okay. So, but if we've got x and y in terms of t, we can have df dt is df dx dx dt plus df dy dy dt, okay? Um, which is, uh, which, which makes sense. They've got an x, so we could do that, but there's another, is the example down here? It's slightly different. Um, anyway, carry on. So that's that. So in the most general case, the function fxy may depend on an alternative coordinate system where x is a function of uv and y is a function of uv. So then we've got df du is df dx dx du plus df dy dy du. 
So this is the chain rule. DFDV, DFDX, DX, DV. So if you think about it, they cancel. Plus DFDY, DY, DV. Okay, so the, if you've got yeah, the V there, but F is written in terms of X and Y, you can do DF, DX, DX, DV, etc. It'll become easy with an example, um, hopefully. So if F of X, Y is X, Y, and X is U squared minus V squared, and Y is 2U, V, Find df du and df dv. fx equals xy. I'm just going to write that here. f of x equals xy. x is u squared minus v squared. And y is 2uv. Okay. Using the rule that we've just got, we've just uh, talked about dfdu, dfdx, dxdu, plus dfdy, dydu. So dfdx is f, and y is the constant, so it's just y because it's a constant times x, which differentiates to the constant. And then dxdu, well, that's uh, a constant, so that's zero, so it's 2u. And then df dy, which is x here, and dy du is 2v. So in it with 2u, oh, we end up with y times 2u. So y is 2uv and 2u there. And x is u squared minus v squared from up there, and then times 2v. So this is 4u squared v plus 2u squared v minus 2v cubed when you expand those brackets. And they combine together 6u squared v minus 2v cubed. Okay. And if you do the same for this one, df dv, so it's df, oh, it's df dv, but we've got f in terms of x and y, and x in terms of x as a function of v, and the u is a constant. So it's df dx dx dv plus df dy dy dv and this is equals to df dx is y because x is a constant dx dv is minus 2v because u is a constant there and then df dy is x and dy dv is 2u now we substitute for y, 2uv, look, y is 2uv times minus 2v. x is u squared minus v squared times 2u. So this is minus 4uv squared is there, plus 2u cubed minus 2uv squared. So we end up with 2u cubed minus 6uv squared. Okay. Lock my door so she won't be walks in while I'm taking this. Right, okay, section 5.4 change of variables. So, the chain rule for general functions is often used where there's been a change of variable. So, for instance, changing Cartesian coordinates to polar. Okay, so where this comes from is if we've got if we've got x y there, and this is theta, this is r. The x coordinate is r cos theta, and the y coordinate is r sine theta. Okay. So we can use this here. If, we want, if we've got a function, df dr, it's df dx, dx dr, plus df dy, dy dr. Uh, dx dr, if you remember, r is x, x is r cos theta, 
y is our sine theta. Okay, so dx dr is cos theta there, dy dr is sine theta there. Okay, and then df d theta now. df dx dx d theta, df dy dy d theta. So df dx is there. dx d theta is going to be cosine differentiates to minus sine. They've actually got capitals here, so let's put capitals in. So this is minus r sine theta. And df dy, dy d theta is r cos theta there. Okay, let's move on to the bit that you need. You can read, I'll leave you this other bit to read here. This is section 5.5 .5 is really important for the assessment that's coming up in May. Okay. And this is the bit that I wanted to get onto today, these examples at the end. So the tangent plane and normal to a surface. So a tangent plane and normal to a surface is the 3D equivalent of fitting a tangent and a normal to a curve in two dimensions. Okay, so what we've had in 2D, we've got, let's say, a curve like this. Whoops, that's not curved at all. We can have the tangent and the normal at a point here. Okay, so straight lines at a point, x, y. We can have the tangent at x, y and the normal. Okay, so what we get with the... Um, now, if I was in front of you, I'd probably put my iPad on top of my head to illustrate that it's the tangent plane to a surface. Um, so let's think, how can we do this? So we've got a tangent plane. So a tangent plane to a surface like so. Okay, so that's, if you like, that would be my head. That would be my trusty iPad. Anyway, but in real life, it's a tangent to a plane. Okay, so this is a, oh well, it's a surface rather. That's the, that's a tangent plane. And that's a surface and it's 3D. Okay, and then we can get the normal as well, which is a, yeah, that right angles to the tangent. Okay. A general plane has the form Z equals AX plus BY plus C. Okay, so we're in 2D, we've got Y equals MX plus C. In 3D, we've got Z equals AX plus BY plus C. Okay, so we've just added that extra dimension in. Okay, so this is the 3D equivalent of a straight line, so that's there and there. DZ, DX, that should be curly D. DZ, DA, and you've got to use curly D. Some of my colleagues are very, and so am I, very strict about this. DZ, DX is A. So if we're going to differentiate this one, Y is a constant and that's a constant. So partially differentiating Z with respect to X gives us A. Partially differentiating z with respect to y gives us b. Constant c here is given by z x y x is y is not z x is intercept. Okay. So to fit a tangent plane to a surface x y at point q, what we've got here? Let's do this in red. Q is there. That's the point where the plane touches the three D curve. Okay, we have um, Okay, to 
sphere tangent plane to a surface at a point Q is ABC on the surface. We have C, the Z coordinate here. That's the Z coordinate is A times. So this has come from Z equals AX plus BY plus C. So there's the X and there's the Y. So basically, but the A is there and there, A, A. The Y, which is B, is there, B, B. And the Z, which is C. Now that's the Z there, so that goes there. Okay, just change the colour back. So A, now to get A, what we do is dz by dx because that's a constant and that's a constant so it's dz by dx or df by dx and b is dz by dy or df by dy okay so combining these together we've got z equals ax plus by plus c and c equals aa plus bb plus c that's this one here and this one here. We get, so we do, we call this one equation one and this one equation two. We do one take away two. We get Z take away C. So Z take away C equals A X take away A plus B Y take away lowercase b. The C take away Z is not. Okay, so what we've got there is Z minus C is A, X minus A plus B, Y minus B, lowercase b. Okay, but we also know that A is D, Z by DX. So that's there, dz by dx, and that's going to be a, and b is dz by dy, which is b. Okay, so let's summarise what we've got so far. We've got differentiate, we're going to have z minus c. Now this is the coordinate of q, the z coordinate of q. This is the x coordinate of q, and this is the y coordinate of q. A and B we're going to work out in a minute, put it all together, we can, then we can rearrange it. Whoops, sorry, I'm trying to get rid of that there. We can, we'll be able to rearrange it to get Z equals A, X minus A plus B, Y minus B plus C, which is the 3D equivalent to y equals mx plus c actually y e well y equals mx plus c it's just the 3d equivalent there okay let's go um now they, they add it here on this side here they add in this extra little bit which i wanted to do on the other side so we've got um z equals now because a is a partial derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at q which was the point where the plane meets the surface there okay so it's df by dx evaluated at q x minus the x coordinate plus df by dy evaluated at q y minus b plus c okay example 51 okay i'm going to do these on a separate piece of paper i think because it's just giving me a little bit more room plus paper afterwards so it's find the equation of the tangent plane Find the equation of the tangent plane, let's go here, at the point Q, it's 
sorry about this, equals 2, 1 minus 2. On the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9. On the sphere, which is the curved surface, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9. Okay, so what you've got to remember, it's z minus, oh, I don't need to do like that. It's z equals Um, um, okay, so there's a little bit extra here. This is why I've paused a little bit. Uh, let's just talk about this here. So this is a sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 9. Um, the sphere has to be represented by two hemispheres for functional integrity. So z is either the upper m hemisphere or the y, because we have to have a z equals. So it's the square root, so it's plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. Upper hemisphere, lower hemisphere because of the minus. Now, 2, 1, minus 2. When you check, when you've got x, x is 2 and y is 1. If x is 2, that's 4. 2 squared is 4. And um, y, 1 squared is 1. So this is 9, take away 5, which is 2. When you, which is 4, square rooted makes 2. Because it's minus 2 here. We need the minus uh, square root. So we can actually, so z is minus 9 minus x squared minus y squared to the half. So that's it. So I need to write that in there. Minus is equals to 9 minus x squared minus y squared to the half. Okay. So, the, the, so we've got this hemisphere. I've got this point. This is actually a plane. Um, okay, hard to draw in 3D. It's touching the hemisphere. If you look at Desmos, actually, that will show you this. I'll, I'll take that afterwards, what it actually looks like. So let's rub that out for now. I can show you at the end. It'll be better. Anyway, if you remember, our tangent plane is Z, is dz by dx evaluated at q times x minus the x coordinate plus d z by dy evaluated at q y minus b and then it's plus c so that's what you've got to remember a is 2 b is 1 c is minus 2 and that's from here a b c okay so now we need to we've got all the bits well we've got that bit we've got that bit we've got that bit we need to do dz dx dz dy substitute in the 2 1 minus 2 and then we've got the full thing so dz dx okay so this is the chain rule so we've got to differentiate round the bracket so the half comes down, multiplies the bracket, and then we drop by 1. And then we multiply by the derivative of the bracket with respect to x. And that's a constant, and that's a constant. So it's going to be times minus 2x. So it's minus a half. 9 minus x squared minus y squared so minus a half times minus 2x. So it's my... Right. The 2's cancel, the minuses cancel, so it's going to be x9 minus x squared minus y squared to the minus a half. And then we've got to substitute in x is 2, y is 1. So dz dx evaluated at q 
2, 9, minus 2 squared, minus 1, minus a half. So it's 2 over the square root, and that's the minus a half. This is going to be 9 minus 5 in total, so it's 4. And it's going to be 2 over 2, which is 1. Just checking that I've got the right same answer as what I had before. This is 1. A is 1. Good. So that one's there. Yeah, so that means that this here, we've got that bit now. We've got that. We've got that. We've got that. We've got that. We need this one next. It's Z dy. Uh, now, is this one that works with the symmetry? Dz dy evaluated at q. It's going to be minus a half, 9 minus x squared, minus y squared, and minus a half. So it's minus 2y. That cancels. The two minuses make a plus. So it's y, 9 minus x squared, minus y squared, minus a half. And we substitute. That's just dz dx at that point dz dy at that point, dz dy evaluated at q, so y is 1, 9 minus x squared is 2 squared, y squared is 1 squared, it's 1, so minus a half, so this is going to be 1 over the square root of 4, which is 1 half, and that is dz dy, so we've got all the bits now, we can say z equals um, dz dx evaluated at q, which was 1, x minus a, which is 2, plus a half, dz dy evaluated at q, y minus b, which is 1, minus 1, plus c, which is minus 2. You can simplify this. Z equals x minus 2 plus a half y minus a half minus 2. So we double everything and we'll get 2z, 2x plus y. We've got minus 4.5 there, minus 9. I'm just going to write this down by the side. So we've got the hemisphere z is minus 9 minus x squared minus y squared to the half. And I've also got z is, or 2z, is 2x plus y minus 9. I'm going to plot those on Desmos and show you what all this looks like. Um, uh, oh, I don't want that. Here we go. Plotting, 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 plotting. Start graphing. There we are. So I need to plot Z, Z, 3D. Um, Desmos 3D, I think I need. Desmos 3D. 3D graphing, that's better. Nope. Oh, I don't think they've got it. Right, 3D graph. GeoGebra. Oh, I knew that. GeoGebra for 3D. Desmos for everything else. Right, so we want Z equals... Surface plotter, I'll find one here. 
expression z equals minus open bracket 9 minus x squared minus y squared to the power a half which I write is 1.5 Okay, calculate. Gosh, what on earth is that? X range, let's do that a bit smaller. Minus five to five. Y range. Minus five to five, I'm just making this up. Calculate, ah, that looks a little bit better. There we are. So we said it was a hemisphere and it's the underneath side. And that was the point, if you remember, was two in the X. Was it? Um, well, it's in the side there. And then... Oh. Now I want to plot the expression that we had before. So there's the curve. going to work. No, I think I'm going to lose what I've got there. Um, I've seen this before somewhere, I know I have. Just try one more thing, I don't want to waste lots of time here. Add to graph, like add to graph. Yeah, I think this one might work. Right, let's try again because it's got that add to graph thing. So I can add the tangent plane to it. So the hemisphere, Z equals minus, open bracket, 9 minus X squared minus Y squared to the power... 0.5 Z is not recognised Oh, I've already got the Z there Let's take the Z out Let's see what that looks like Hemisphere um, Let's get. Let's do it from minus 5 to 5 What we did before because that seemed to show the full thing Y from minus 5 to 5 Hemisphere Brilliant Add to graph a function and the function we're going to add to the graph is um, the tangent plane that we've just worked out which is z equals x plus a half y minus 4.5 let's make that a lowercase x because I don't think it'd like that there we are There we are. So this is what we've done. Hemisphere. Let's do some more, more x's and y's. Let's go 5 to 5. Minus 5 to 5. Right, here we go. So we've got hemisphere. We've got a tangent plane. Let's just get this point. It should have been at the point 2, 1, minus 2. Um, so it's where it's touching it. Let's let's get it leveled up like we would normally have it with an X. There, that's it. X Y. So X two. You can't quite. See. Oh, maybe that's quite a good angle for it. Add to graph a point. Let's put on the point. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 2, 1, minus 2. Nope, let me just check my point. 2, 1, minus 2, yeah. Let's plot the point. No. Let's plot the point 2, 1, minus 2. And then we'll be able to see it. 2, 1, minus 2. Close bracket. In. Where's the point? We've got that there. 
2, 1, minus 2. Can you see it's it there, that dot? Um, I haven't got a mouse in here to show this. Look, there's the dot. There's the dot. And that is the point 2, 1, minus 2. Have I convinced you that that's touching the hemisphere at the tangent plane at that point? Right, there we are. Can you see the dot again? Anyway, that one was quite good. So if you, I think you can see the um, thing there, monroecc.edu. That was quite a good one for plotting these. Right, okay, next example. Ah, it does say find the normal. It doesn't say it in the question, but if we need to find the normal of this one, if we've got, so we've got z is um, x plus a half y minus 9 over 2. If you remember, r dot n equals d. So what we've got here, we'll rearrange this. You've got x plus a half y minus z is 4 over 2. So that's taking the z off this side and adding this to this side. 9 over 2, sorry, 4 and a half is what I was thinking. So in the r dot n equals d, the r is the x, y, z. So the normal is 1, a half, minus 1. And the d would be 4 and a half, 9 over 2. Okay. So r... So if it says find the normal, you've got to collect the x, y and z together on one side and then take the coefficients. So it's one half minus one. Yeah, you could also sort of double everything up to get rid of the half, two, one, minus two. Okay. And that's what they've done there. Two minus one. So that's an extra question that wasn't at the start. Okay, right, the next one, example 52, and that'll be enough for today. This is, you do need this for your exam, this type of question, but you'll see them in the exam papers that we've got on, online. They're not quite complicated, is this? <laughs> uh, but you can look at those, and we'll do revision next time we're back in uni. Find the tangent plane and normal to the surface z equals x squared plus y squared at the point q is 1 on 2. Okay. So they've got enough space here to doodle here, so I don't need a new play, place. Um, I'll do it here, the solution, the written solution's there, but I'll do it my way. Z equals X squared plus Y squared. At the point, one, one, two. Two minus two, two. Okay. Um. So we always have z is dz by dx evaluated at the x coordinate and then it's times x minus the x coordinate a b c let's just do it and generalize it first of all x minus a so it's the x coordinate of the given point plus dy, these are partial, curly d's, dz dy, evaluated at q, y minus b, and then plus c. So we end up with dz dx is 2x, because the y is a constant. So dz dx, evaluated at q, is 2 times a, 2 times 1, which is 2. dz dy is 2y. dz dy evaluated q. 2 times the b. I've only put this step in here. It's because I was sort of aware. But they're both the same. So it's you might think it's 1 all the time. But it's not. It's the a, coord the a value and the b value. Which is basically the x coordinate and the y coordinate. 2 times 1, which is also 2. Okay, so that's, you don't really need to, they're not always going to be the same, it's just this is an unusual example where they are. Okay, so we've got all the bits now, we can say z is dz dx evaluated at q, which is 2, x minus 1, plus dz dy evaluated at q, which is also 2, 
and then this is y minus b which is 1 and c is c is 2 so z is 2x minus 2 plus 2y minus 2 plus 2 they cancel out so z is 2x plus 2y minus 2 and I'll write that down because I'll show you that on this uh, thing that I've just found this 3d graph plotter 2x plus 2y minus 2 the original is z is x squared plus y squared and the point is 1 1 2 and then so for the normal we've got to rearrange this so we get 2x plus 2y minus z equals plus 2 because that goes over there and that goes over there so our normal is therefore 2 2 minus 1 the coefficients of x y z in order I'll go back to this here um, let's clear all this off um, take that away Oh, could have increased the size there. Well, never mind, I'll do that this time. Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Add to graph function. Uh, z. Z equals x squared plus y squared. I don't want a capital X there. Um, x squared plus y squared. So that's the original curve. Oops. Let's get this looking right. X, Y, Z. So there we go. Looks like that. And I've said the tangent plane is Z is 2X plus 2Y minus 2. So I'm going to add to graph. Tangent plane function. Z equals. Put some funny things in by default. 2X. 2y minus 2. So there's, wow, there we go. Tangent plane. And we need to check it's at the right point. Let's get x horizontal at least. So we're not going x horizontal, y vertical. Is that there? Gosh, you have to play around with these. It's quite good fun. I mean, this is like, this is like airflow over the nose of an aeroplane. This is the sort of thing where this comes in. Or it looks like tools and all sorts of things. I'm sure you'll have some fun in engineering with these. Right, the point that I need to do, add a point, one, one, two. Oh, nearly. Nearly got it right first time. One, comma, one, comma, two. And let's make this really big. 14, seeing as it's there. We'll go to spot it then. There it is, there it is. That's the, you can see that big blob now. So that's the point, and we've got the tangent plane at that point. I think you'll agree. Yeah, that plane is touching that curved surface at that point. Okay, so I hope you understand it's like an extension from y equals mx plus c into z equals mx plus my plus c. Um, well, the m for the x and the m for the y. So you, you use partial derivatives to get the gradient and evaluate it at the, for the x coordinate and evaluate it for the y coordinate. Right, so that's the first topic that you need and you need this last one for your exam, but look in the exam papers and you'll hopefully make sense. So to summarize, what you really need is this here. Okay, and that's what you need, and you need to be able to work out. Well, the Z's always given, you need to be able to work out that, and that basically, and then substitute in the bits, and then simplify at the end. And if they ask for a normal, rearrange it to get a Z, uh, X multiple of X, multiple of Y, multiple of Z equals a number, and then the normal are these coefficients of the X, Y, Z.